Okay, so welcome back to another video. Um, I got a request to show you how to um, make some cool FM sounds in Faceplant, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, I got two tracks here, which is called Modulator 1 and Modulator 2. It has Each track has its own instance of Faceplant with the exact same preset, which I'm gonna go through with you guys. And we got a little MIDI clip here that I prepared. Um, nothing special, it's quite straightforward, just hitting the root notes, 16th notes, and with different note length. Uh, for the record, it's uh, a four bar loop. So, yeah, let's uh, move on. So, for the generators, um, or I should say, in general, when I do patches in Faceplant. Uh, my goal is to utilize the generators as much as I can before I move on to the effect sections and the macro knobs, or, well, technically not the macro knobs, but yeah, especially the effect section. Uh, the reason is because if I can get a sound as interesting as possible without applying effects, chances are that the effects is just going to amplify those interesting parts. So that's why I usually start figuring out what I want to do with my sound in the generator section. So in this this case, we have a carrier signal, which is a sawtooth. We have a two different modulators. So for the modulator one, as we have here, is actually a sine wave. And modulated two is a triangle shape, a wavetable, which is on the this channel, modulated two. So for ba basic FM synthesis, um, the idea is to have one oscillator or generator, as I call it here in. in Face plant to modulate the either the frequency for frequency modulation or modulate the phase for phase modulation. In this case, um, I do both. So we apply some modulation from the modulator one to the phase of the carrier signal, and also apply some modulation for the pitch or, or frequency frequency modulation. After that, um, I activate unit. We have some unison, we have some detune, spread amount, and blend. And then we have a distortion, a fallback distortion in this case. You can choose different ones, but I think the whoops, let's undo that. The fallback distortion sounded best in this patch. And we have a filter with a times two slope, a bandpass filter. And we have uh, some cutoff, quite high resonance. And then we have the output here, which is basically our ADSR envelope. So for the modulators, uh, I chose to have two randoms and two LFOs, where random one is modulating the cutoff frequency on the filter. Um, we have random two which is mapped to the sustain, the release, and the decay of the amp section over here. So decay, sustain, and release time. Then we have LFO1 here, which is a, um, it was a sine wave, but I drew another shape inside it. Uh, that is modulating the flanger, uh, flanger delay time, and the flanger depth. And then we have the last oscillator here, which is just uh, mapped to the delay time in lane two over here, which I will cover in a bit. So yeah, I think that's it for the uh, modulators. It's nothing only for modulators, but uh, they do some interesting stuff. So you don't need that many 
in order to make it sound interesting. So let's talk about some of the macro knobs. Uh, we have the filter cutoff map to the filter over here. Um, then we have stereo spread, which is mapped to detune, spread, and blend if you want a more wide lead or a mono sounding lead. Then we have the random DSR, which is an abbreviation for decay, sustain, and release. Uh, when it's not activated, when it's at zero, there's no modulation happening from the random LFO over here. But when I turn it up, we increase the output or the amount of depth from the modulator. At the same time, we lower the sustain value. And what, what's happening when it's at 100% is that this modulator is randomly choosing um, different uh, values of the decay, sustain, and release time to get like a more pluckier sound. And then we have the octave over here, octave minus one and uh, zero. Uh, minus one means that the modulator signal will be playing at an octave below the carrier signal and when it's turned 100% it's going to be playing at the same uh, same amount of uh, uh, on the same octave as the carrier signal so when it's at zero, at 100% over here we get more like a more brighter sounding fm uh, sound compared to this which is a more grittier type of sound so yeah that's uh, these four that it covers the um, generator section let's talk about the effects section so we got lane one lane two lane three lane one has a low shelf to get rid of the unwanted low frequencies lane two consists of the more creative effects so we have the flanger here that is being modulated by the sine wave uh, specifically the delay time and the depth. Then we have scrolling activated with a bit of offset and some motion. Quite slow rate, 0.3 hertz. A lot of negative feedback too. Then we have this creative delay, um, which is where the delay time is set to milliseconds and it's being modulated by this uh, sine wave over here. Uh, also, this one has a lot of feedback and some ducking, so we, so the, you know, so the, the, uh, lead stands out more in the mix. And then we have a gain, snap in, and also a limiter, which I will explain why uh, during the, when I talk about the macro knobs. Uh, and for the last one are the ordinary delay, like the one over eight dotted delay time, which I set to medium feedback, uh, ping pong mode. And in order to activate the traditional ping pong effect, you need to pan it to the left or to the right, depending on your taste. And also a little bit of ducking here too, so we get a more clear, so the lead stands out more in the mix. And then we have a reverb. So yeah, that covers the effects section. So let's cover the last remaining macro knobs. We got woozy, flange, delay, and reverb. This knob styles the dry wet amount of this specific effect, the delay effect. Then the same goes for the flanging effect over here. But since we have a lot of high feedback, uh, I need to compensate the volume that is adding from the feedback over here. So I've mapped it to the gain before it reaches a limiter and also the output gain. Uh, I also forgot to tell you that I did this with uh, Woozy as well because we have a lot of feedback in this delay too. So yeah, um, then we have ordinary delay, which is one over eight dotted, as I said before, and then we have the reverb amount too over here. So it's just dry wet knobs mainly. So yeah, that's cover that covers the macro knobs. All right, so let's uh, start jamming with the patch, see what we can come up with.
was when we had the modulator signal 12 semitones below the carrier signal. Let's try it with an octave above, see how it sounds. Just going to reset some of the parameters on the if on the rack here. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's the uh, modulator one. Let's move on to modulator two. Remember, modulator two was being FM'd from the triangle shape. The modulator one was from the sine sine wave. So it's going to get similar characteristics, but at the same time, very different. The the thing that will be the same will be the effect. So it's the exact same rack that I'm playing around with. So they share their similar properties, so to speak. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, it might be hard to... I mean, we only have two hands, right? So what you could do is you could go to your Max for Live library, search for the LFO. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can take this one. And let's say I want it to modulate the filter cutoff and I want to free my hands from using that knob all the time. So I can set it to something like random. Maybe smooth it out a little bit. Uh, change the one over four, something like that. There we have it. Map it to the filter cutoff. And then I can start jamming around again, you know? Let's, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to show you the other option. <laughs> Turn off the LFO. Um... Oh yeah, I have to delete it. So 
yeah, now we're finished, I think. I think I got it all covered. Um, if you like the video, just give it a like, share it, or whatever. I uh, hope it inspired you to create some more patches. Um, leave a comment if there's anything you're wondering about, or have some kind of request, and I'll see if I can fill it. Cheers!